Okay, so we will start with a new compressor from Frozen Wasteland, the Manic Compression, that can be great for mixing in VCV, but can also get quite creative because it has CV inputs for practically uh, everything. It has also a built-in sidechain input, and also a built-in envelope that will output the envelope, as you can see here, of the compression. So I have here a sample, a drum sample, going to the compression, you can see it's working quite hard. <laughs> and it will output the work of the compressor that we can use for other things in VCV. So it's quite interesting. I have an example down. So first of all, I'm using one instance here on the whole mix. So everything is going through a manic compression. And then I have here the gate sequencer, um, sequencing a few drum modules, a kick, a snare, a closed hi-hat, and an open hi-hat. I'm mixing them into the manic compression. This is how it will sound like. It has also a mid-side compression. So if you activate this, you can choose to compress only the mids or only the sides. You can hear it quite, if you are with headphones, quite clearly. If I turn it off and I turn off the compressor, those are the drums without compression. Of course, they are lower a bit in volume. And those are the drums after. They are a bit more crunchy, not crunchy, but a bit more punchy, I would say. We also have a built-in low-pass filter that will filter the low frequencies of the input. For example, if you have drums like here, you don't want the compressor to work so much on the kick drum, but more on the higher frequencies. You just turn it on and you can see here exactly how the compressor is working. So now I can lower the threshold even more. Or the same with the high frequencies. You can change the attack and release, of course. The, also the curve of the attack and the and the release, which is quite cool. You can of course bring it even more in volume. We can also create a um, parallel compression because we have a mix knob, so you can compress this really harshly. Let's do this actually with. Uh, shorter release maybe oh yeah something like this and now take the mix down all the way let's say and now start to bring it back until it sounds a bit more cohesive it's a bit lower in volume but like this you can get really interesting results with parallel compression but let's leave it as it was before it was a nice sound. So now I'm compressing only the mid. So only what's in the center, not in the sides. And again, as you can see, everything has a CV input. And I'm using here also, you can see this here on the scope, the envelope output. Now the blue trace on the scope, the blue trace on the scope is the original um, voltage, the original output, what it will output, which as, as you can see, it's not, it's not quite there. I mean, it's quite low. Unless I'm bringing, for example, the input gain all the way up, and then it will be a bit, a bit more. But I'm sending it in this case through the offset module from Bog Audio just to, uh, to um, multiply this signal to make it stronger. As you can see, this is the pink trace, right? Just so I can use it a bit. Maybe we can do something like this. I wish it had something built in, in the module, in the compressor, an amplifier for the envelope, because as you can see, the envelope is quite weak. There is not so much you can do with it. You have to amplify it. I'm using the offset from Bog Audio. There are many ways to do this. But anyway, with this envelope, with the amplified envelope, I'm using to bring in another voice. I have your source from Squinky Labs going through a filter and punch, which is a VCA. And I'm using this envelope to um, bring in uh, bring up the VCA to open the VCA. This is going through some delay. So you can hear. That the rhythm of source, the rhythm of this voice is the same as the drums because I'm using its envelope. Or I'm using the envelope of the drums.
which is quite cool. I have here another voice, I'm using the percussive vibration, sequencing it with the grid sequencer, going through Vakumba for some crunch and um, corner blob for delay. Now after the delay, I'm sending it to another, to another compressor, to another medic, manic compression, and here I'm side-chaining it with the kick drum. I'm just sending the kick drum output to the side-chain input, and you can see that it will work together with the kick drum. So now I'm side-chaining this voice after the delay, which is quite interesting. After the delay, I'm side-chaining it to the kick drum, so it will sound like this. You get this pumping, moving um, quality to it. So this is also quite useful, the side chaining, and of course you can change the attack and release to get exactly the things you want. And here I have something a bit more quirky, I guess. As you can see, I'm modulating the threshold, the ratio, let me zoom in a bit maybe, the ratio, the knee, which is this thing here, if it's uh, more uh, sharp or more curved, the attack and release curves. I'm activating and deactivating the mid-side uh, compression um, which is quite cool and this is going through a filter. The voice itself is too bleak. Um, oscillators going through slap which is a, a VCA with a built-in envelope or an envelope with a built-in VCA depends how you want to look at it. <laughs> and uh, the modulo sequencer is sequencing this voice. So we get lots of movement. If I bypass the compressor, it's just a, a constant stream of notes. But with the compressor, it adds a lot of um, movement and levels. And again, with the filter, I can do this. Or add even more movement. And then here we have the main compressor compression on everything, which is also quite helpful, just to glue everything together. Yeah, so a really nice compressor. Let's have a look. You know what? Let's have a look at the CPU. And you can see it's it's quite good actually. Look, right, three percent. 4% depends what you're doing with it. Let's see the one with the modulation, also 4%. So it's quite good, it's a quite, quite efficient. Yeah, so the compressor, the many compression from Frozen Waste. So here we have a fun module, the Electric Ensemble from Flag, which is a chorus. Um, first of all, it sounds great. Second of all, it has CV inputs for everything, which is quite cool. We can change the rate, we can change the depth, we can change the spread. This will go up to 150 milliseconds. That's the delay time. Um, add low pass and high pass filters, add drive to the sound, which can add lots of character also. And of course, mix. Again, CV inputs for almost everything, and it's mono in stereo out, which is quite cool to um, add texture to a sound. So here, for example, I have the ADDR sequencer, sequencing bleak first through fate, just to add um, more random notes here and there. This is going through tangents, uh, Lopez filter in this case, and it's going to the electric ensemble. And I have sample and hold, first of all, modulating the cutoff point of the filter, but also modulating the depth of this uh, chorus. So this is how it will sound like. This is without, I will take the mix down. So this is the original voice. And now with adding the chorus, you can hear it instantly, instantly um, it opens the sound. This is full wet. So 
so it adds a nice texture to the sound, this is really nice. So this is the first voice, now it works also really nice, really nicely on drums. So here again the gate sequencer sequencing a few drum modules and I'm mixing them into the electric ensemble and here I'm using sample and hold um, to, first of all to add some velocity to the hi-hats but I'm also modulating the mix so the ensemble, the electric ensemble, the chorus will come in and out. Oh yeah. It adds this uh, sort of granular effect even. So in this case I wish there was also a CV input for the spread, which could also be nice space, uh, there is space here, to do something like this. Very cool, so also on drums it's really nice. Okay, another voice I have here, I have here Vesek being sequenced by the burst module from Rappelsen, um, which means that it will be a sort of a one-shot sequence that, uh, uh, that's repeating itself every now and then. Now, this is going to another electric ensemble, from there it is going to a delay, and I'm using sample and hold here uh, to modulate the mix of Vesec, but also to modulate the rate and the mix of the electric ensemble. character it adds to the sound. Really nice sound design tool. This is nice. Okay, very cool. The electric ensemble from Flag. Um, I hope you will have fun with it. Okay, so now we got all of the Instruo collection in VCVREC. I could make this whole video just about the Instruo collection. Um, but I'm sure that you will explore this collection by yourself. So I just want to mention one module in this case, the Athro, the Wave Shaper from Instruo. Because of two things, I mean there are a lot of modules in this uh, um, uh, plugin collection that you can experiment with, but I think this one is a fun one, I have it also in hardware, and it's always adding lots of character to the sound, I love it. And um, two things I want to show you, first of all, I have here a VCO going through it, as you can see, when the fader is all the way down, there will be no sound, no signal going through, which means that you can use it as a sort of a VCA also if you wish because you can see I can start bringing the voice in and in, even before before it's even folding it. You know, we have a built-in attenuverter that we can control and use it as a sort of a VCA, which is quite cool. And, and it has a ping input, so you can ping it, you can excite it with triggers and gates. So here I have the manual gate and have a look on the scope, you can see. Maybe I will take this a bit in. You can see we are pinging it and we can control the decay with the strike time with this um, control here. So we can have more decay or less decay. Now with this you can get really interesting rhythmic results. So here I have a few examples. I have here the trigger sequencer, the eight step trigger sequencer from Count Modula. And I have here Basil going through Arthur and some delay. And I have the first sequence set to seven steps. And I have the sequence um, pinging or striking the wave shaper Arthur or a hero or something like this. I'm not so sure how it's pronounced. So this will sound as follows. 
so you can hear the nice rhythmic results if I take out the delay for example now this is basically a sine wave basically will output a sine wave but still it sounds really nice lots of character you can change this also a bit Right, so this is one voice. The next voice is coming from this basal here. So we have another basal, again, a sine wave going through, a through. And in this case, I have the ADDR sequencer going first through a VCA. No, it's sequencing a VCA, sorry, because I have here an envelope um, opening the wave fold. I'm not using the strike, but I'm using it as a sort of a VCA. So I have an envelope opening the wavefold, but instead of just having it in the same uh, level, so that I have the ADDR, uh, ADDR sequencer sequencing the VCA, which the envelope is going through, so the levels of the envelope will change. This is going through some reverb, and I'm modulating the wet and decay time. We get sort of a velocity control because again you can use it as a VCA. It's not even folding the signal. If I open the attenuator a bit more, then it will start folding it also. So you can really play with this. Okay, another voice is this basal here. So I have another basal, again, a sine wave going through, through, us. So in this case, I'm using an audio rate. You can see the rate of this uh, LFO, an audio rate LFO, 523 Hertz to modulate the wave folding. And um, so I'm modulating the wave folding at audio rates. This is going to a filter just so I can control the harmonics a bit. And this is going through another ASRO that I'm using again as a sort of a VCA. You can see I'm opening the wave fold with an envelope. This is going to Sangster for another more crunch. Oh yeah. So uh, at one point I'm using Astro to um, sh shape the wave at audio rates and another one is a sort of a VCA. And here I have another one which I'm using as a kick drum. Now this kick drum can be quite intense if I take the wavefold up, for example. So in this case, I'm also using it as a VCA. I'm also striking it again with the sequencer just to add more rhythmic results. So uh, the voice itself is another basal. I'm modulating its um, um, pitch or its frequency with an envelope, a really short envelope, just to create this uh, drum effect, this bass drum effect. And I'm also using another envelope for the VCA. In this case, I'm using Astro as my VCA, going through tangents, um, just for a bit uh, control of the harmonics and some delay. Oh no, sorry, this is going through tangents as a high pass because I'm sending just the high frequencies to a delay with font in the feedback loop. So first of all, this is the kick. Oh yeah. And you can hear, if I solo it, you can hear the strike rhythm. Pam, 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 pam. Right, so this is quite cool. And again, I can change this a bit. And with the delay, again, only the high frequencies are going to the delay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, so Astro from Stream again, you can experiment with the whole collection for months. I thought I will highlight Astro because I really like it, I really enjoy it. I think there's lots to explore with it. And it's quite simple, so it's not overwhelming. And so yeah, I wish you lots of fun with it. 
Okay, so now we have a really interesting sequencer from Nischi, the programmer sequencer. So we have four different channels, A, B, C, and D. We can run it forward, backward, or address it with CV. And so we can use, I will show you this in a second, something like sample and hold to uh, run between the different steps. Each of the steps has a trigger input, so we can select the steps also with triggers. We can trigger the steps and a trigger output. We can also deactivate the trigger output if we want. And we have ratcheting for each of the steps. So we can add also ratcheting. We can select the steps with the mouse. And then as long as I click and hold one of the steps, you can see the push output will output a gate that will stay high as long as, I, uh, as, long as I'm holding this step. In the right click menu, we can choose different scales. We can also choose different voltage ranges if we want to use it for pitch, for modulation. We can also output a polyphonic signal of the four channels out of output A, which is quite cool. So let's run this forward, for example. And now I can say um, every division of eight, I want to jump to the third step. So now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps starting from step three. For example, this is something you can do. Or again, you can uh, drive it with CV, just like this, through the address input. And also, if I go forward again, I can turn off steps. You can see, I can, I can say whenever the sequence reaches a certain step, let's say I want it to stop when it, re when it reaches step eight. So now it stops, or I can just turn off a few of the steps. When it goes forward or when it goes backward, I can set something different. So it's quite, quite the interesting sequencer. I have here a few examples. So first of all, I have here a voice. I have two basal oscillators going through slap and some delay, and I'm sequencing each one of them with two sequences. I have it, I have it set to minor and a range of two volts. So we have two octaves. Let's listen to this already. So what I have here, I have a division of the clock divided by one and a half going to chances. Chances is a Bernoulli gate, which means that according to the probability I set here, there is a chance that this, div uh, that this uh, divided clock will come out of output A in this case. And this is triggering step six. So every once in a while, according to the probability of chances, the sequencer will jump back or forward to step six. Let's wait for it. It happened now change the chance. You see, something like this, and we create, create a bit more movement in the sequence. Okay, now what I'm doing also, I'm combining a few of the trigger outputs with binary, which is an O logic in this case, which means that whenever one of, of the, or the, one of the triggers or the other, or a few at once, which doesn't happen in this case, but still, we are sort of combining them and getting a gate whenever each one of them is playing. And this is triggering a kick drum, which I have here with tremor. Okay, another thing here, if you notice, I have First of all, all of the steps set, most of the steps other than two, <laughs> set to ratcheting of two because I want sort of a 16th notes fill. And I have one step here with the ratcheting of four and another step which is here ratcheting of three. Now I'm using the main trigger output which includes also the ratcheting to trigger a Hyatt module. So we get this. this rhythm. Which is quite cool. And again, sometimes it will jump back like it did now, jump back to um, step number six. Another voice I have, I have here another gate output, another trigger output, triggering the noise section of tremor, which is a sort of a snare in this case. It's going to a delay. 
and I'm triggering sample and hold after I'm triggering the snare not to get those glitchy, um, glitchy out effects, which are sometimes cool, not in this case, I didn't want them in this case. So this sample and hold is um, modulating the time and the mix of the delay. By the way, this is step six that's triggering the snare. So sometimes, like now, every time that I am speaking, it happens. It will jump back to <laughs> it will jump back to step six. Just like this. which is quite cool. So the, this sequencer, you can explore a lot with this sequencer and create all sorts of interesting rhythms, interesting sequences, sometimes random, sometimes not, and have fun. Okay, so the last module for today is Eugene, which is a Euclidean sequencer. Now there are more Euclidean sequencers in VCV Rec, but this is, first of all, it looks cool and it's quite interesting because you have CV inputs for all the different things. You can run it, run it um, in reverse, you can invert the sequence, so I can change different parameters, like the length of the sequence, how many hits it will have. A Euclidean sequencer will try and distribute the hits as evenly as, possi as possible. So if you have 12 uh, steps, but only five hits in this step, so it will distribute the steps as evenly as possible. We can shift those. You can see it just turns around. We have CV inputs for all of those parameters. We can invert. We can invert a sequence, which is also quite cool, and make it run in reverse. So here I have a few um, examples. So first of all, I have here a few FM voices that are quite the same, but with a different sequencer. I have two FM operators for each of the voices, and I have each of them set to a different note. So here I have G, here I have B flat, and here I have D. Let's start with the first one, which is the G note. And what I'm doing here, I have a length of nine with four hits, but I'm triggering the inversion of the sequence with a divided clock. So you can see we get different rhythms. This will be the second and third voices. Oh yeah, man, I love this. So here I'm using the ADDR sequencer to sequence the shift. Again with the divided clock, so the sequence will shift, will turn around according to the sequencer. And the third voice, I'm using the ADDR sequencer to change the amounts of hits. So I'm sequencing how many, how, how many hits this uh, sequence will have. Oh man. Here I have another um, Eugene, another Euclidean sequencer with 28 steps, but only six of them are on. And this is sequencing a bass drum. And what I'm doing here, I have here another voice, and I'm using again logic, this time XOR, which means that only when one or the other, in this case we have four, so only when sequence one, O, B, O, C, O, D will play, but not when one of them is playing together with a different one. Um, only then it will output a trigger. And this trigger is triggering a sequential switch, and I'm using, I, I uh, built my own sort of a little sequencer, random sequencer. I have the notes G, D, B flat, and F going to different steps of the sequencer and uh, of the switch, sorry, and the switch is uh, being triggered randomly, 
which means that I get a sort of a random sequence, but with specific notes that I wanted to choose. This is sequencing the percussive vibration going through some delay. Yes, yes, yes. So you see, the, uh, this sequencer is quite, quite fun. There's lots to explore because of the, or thanks to the CV inputs. And it's quite visual. I like this. I like this. <laughs> I like this. Um, and that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. Feel free to share. Feel free to subscribe, to comment. Thank you so much, so much for your support, everyone. I wish you a great year, a new year with lots of fun modules not too many please not too many modules let us let us have some fun with what we already have um, and that's it cheers